Hello, everybody. This is Dylan, the host and producer for Survivor Millennium Park. Very excited to be bringing you the cast assessment for season two of Survivor Millennium Park. Can't believe they uh, talked me into doing another season. Uh, I'm recording this a couple of days before we head to the park to film. So, uh, in theory, the people I'm about to talk about are the people who are on the final cast. Uh, no last minute dropouts or substitutions or anything. So, uh, looking forward to seeing how things play out with this group. Uh, just like last year, some of these people I've known for many, many years. Some of these people I'm just meeting for this project. Uh, so excited to dive into my thoughts on what's going to happen and how they're all going to do. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Starting off, we're going to be talking about the Carpe tribe wearing the orange buffs that consist of Angela, Jean, Keith, Dan, Eric, Kat, and Julia. I anticipate that this group is going to probably be the more strategically savvy of the two tribes. I see this being the group that's really getting into the gameplay. However, I think that this is the tribe that is maybe less likely to be a cohesive unit. Uh, not, not anticipating any sort of major conflict on this tribe, but we're going to get into a little bit of the individuals. I think that they are less likely to sort of mass together than the other tribe and potentially could have a little bit more trouble uh, working together in the challenges, which is, which is going to be a big part of this season. All right, first up for the Carpe Trip, we've got Angela, the high school science teacher. Super excited for Angela to be part of the cast. I think that she is a player to watch for. I know that she has participated in at least one other uh, Survivor game like this, where I believe she did well. Uh, she came across as extremely savvy in her interview. Uh, she talked a lot about, you know, when she's part of a group, she likes to keep an eye out for people who might be on the out of a group, make sure that they feel included. I think that for a game like this, that could really carry her far if people think that they can... Uh, rely on her if people sort of see her as like the bridge keeping keeping them all together uh i think that if they're smart they will try to get angela out quickly because i think that she has a lot of potential to take this game by storm all right next up we've got dan who is a special education teacher and camp director dan another big survivor fan that i'm really excited to have part of the cast i think something that's kind of unique about dan as a survivor fan is you know uh you know during the casting process for these games you get a lot of people who talk about like you know like they want to play like the big schemers from the show they want to be making these big crazy moves you talk to dan his favorite players are like the nice guys. He likes, you know, Jeremy. He likes Ethan from Survivor. So I think it's really exciting that Dan wants to come into the game and, like, play like a good, decent person and play like a clean, honest game. Uh, you know, it, it's always hard to say going into these things, you know, how honest can one be in a game like this? I think that the, the question mark I have for Dan that I often have for uh, big, big Survivor fans that are looking forward to an experience like this is does he find himself in a position where he ends up overplaying because he's really excited Excited to be there uh, could potentially happen but I think that if he finds himself in a good group and he feels comfortable going with it uh, Dan could go quite far in this game I met Eric playing a game like this uh, a non-filmed game called the genius Massachusetts which he actually went on to win it's another like you know social strategy game uh, very creative strategist I was very charmed by his play style and really enjoyed uh, being able to play with him in the game uh, but like I said, he went on to win. By the end of it, the cast was fully split between people who really appreciated his play style and people who were not such big fans of his by the end of it. He's just, he's very good at controlling information and processing things in real time uh, and coming up with creative strategies. So, Eric is a person to watch. I don't think Eric can win um, just because I think it's impossible that they're going to let him get to the end. And if he does, it'll be like the it'll be the biggest blowout in the history of these games. So the question for Eric, I think, is going to be, does the rest of the cast catch on to what he's doing and do they get him out? Because I think if he gets to day two, he could take it the rest of the way. They've got to get him out immediately. Gene is somebody that I'm really pulling for and really rooting for for this season. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know what to expect, though. She talked in her interview about, you know, she can be a little bit on the more quiet side, a little bit more reserved with new people. And that's something that could be a huge detriment 
in a game like this that is so fast paced that just people have to make these big decisions about voting people out based on very little information. Uh, but at the same time, she talked about how over the last few years, she's tried opening up more, tried putting herself out there more often. So I hope that that is the energy that Jean brings to the game. Uh, she's a big Survivor fan, so I'd really love to see her do well and really have the opportunity to play a fantastic game. I know that, you know, based on her profession, she's good under pressure, good under, you know, tight deadlines and having to figure things out quickly. So uh, hoping that she brings all of that to the game and really, really rooting for Jean to have a successful weekend. Julie is the star of the season. Uh, I know that in my heart. <laughs> we haven't recorded a second of footage, but I just know Julia has such a, a, a big, fun personality. Uh, I think she's going to stand out immediately as somebody that people gravitate towards. I think people could underestimate her because she's not coming in as like a diehard Survivor fan who's like here to like fulfill a years long dream. She's, as far as I'm aware, she's just coming in to have fun. I would not be shocked to see if Julia links up with uh, some more strategic players. If she gets, if she gets to the end and the people she's with are like, well, like, I, I made all these big moves. Like, they're going to vote for me. But the people on the jury say, you know what? Yeah, you pulled all these crazy moves. But guess what? Julie was nice. Julie was pleasant to spend the weekend with. And therefore, Julia is going to win the whole thing. So I think Julia is a, an incredible contender for this game. And I'm really excited. Uh, so many gems from her casting interview. Really excited to see what she comes up with at the park. And another big personality on the Carpe Tribe is going to be Kat. Kat is somebody that I worked with a number of years ago. Uh, and when she reached out to me, I was so pleasantly surprised. And I, I knew immediately she was going to be on the cast. Uh, she reached out. She's like, look, I'm not a Survivor fan, but this looks really fun. This looks like a big adventure. Uh, this just looks like a fun new thing to try. Uh, Kat is a very driven person. I think she's got a, I think she's got like a fun competitive side. You know, she does marathons. She's very athletic. Uh, she described herself like an energy energizer bunny uh she also described herself uh when i asked you know what is her role in a group of people she said what's a nice way to say i'm manipulative <laughs> uh, so cat i think my again not being a survivor fan could potentially struggle with some of the strategy side but on the other hand could be underestimated i will say i think that she is a little bit more likely than some others i think to kind of cut through some of like the survivor jargon i think if cat's in an alliance that's like oh do we split the votes to like counter an idol i think that she's gonna be the one to cut to be like guys we need a plan. We need to come up with, like, we need something coherent that is going to work for us. Kat is going to be an extremely fun uh, presence on the season. I really hope she goes far. <laughs> Keith is coming in with maybe the highest pressure and highest stakes out of anyone in the cast. Uh, he is part of the friend group with Andrew and Kim from season one. Uh, you know, I got to figure with Andrew having come in sixth place, Kim coming in fourth. Keith has got to make it to like the final five or else I, I, I don't I don't even know what's going to happen there. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, Keith is another really fun personality, very funny, very sharp, very witty, uh, but not in like a, not in a way that I think he needs to, I don't think he needs to be the center of attention. I think he's happy to kind of come in with a little one-liner, uh, and just be like part of like a good group. Um, Keith, all I can think about with Keith is the fact that he is an actor and if he gets to the end, a big part of sealing the deal and winning the game is being able to tell, uh, the story of your game to the jury who's voting for a winner to sort of explain here is here is the narrative of what just happened this weekend and here's how I fit into it uh, and just thinking of somebody who's like comfortable in front of a crowd comfortable talking sort of like like analyzing relationships uh I I would not want Keith anywhere near the final tribal council if I was playing Next up, we've got the DM tribe wearing purple, uh, consisting of Sarah, Drew, Colin, Jason, Karina, Jeff, and Gabby. Uh, I see the DM tribe as maybe the less strategically savvy tribe. I don't think this tribe has as many like big individual gamers, uh, but I do think that this is the tribe that's maybe more likely to get along well, uh, which, like I said before, a big part of the, the sort of challenge design for this season was to really force the teams to work together. You can't rely on just like one player to do well and to carry the team. So that could give them a, a slight edge. Uh, but I don't know. I could see them potentially being outfoxed by the Carpe tribe. So I think this tribe has a little bit, a little bit more work to do if they're going to be successful here. 
All right, first on the DM tribe, we've got Colin. I think Colin is going to be a force to be reckoned with in this game. I think he's very outgoing and friendly, very easy to talk to, uh, likes making connections with people. Uh, and I think he's also going to be very strategically savvy. I know that he's a Survivor fan who likes to kind of think through the different uh, the different decision points that come up in a game of Survivor. You know, I uh, think like the, the kind of like what would you do aspect of it is something that he's he told me he was very interested in. So I think it's going to be cool to see how does he handle that in real time. You know, when when he's in the voting booth and he has to make a decision how does he do that how does he weigh his options how does he like then navigate that back at camp uh you know when you are being like a big friendly personality like and everybody feels like they're working with you you know that could put you in a tight spot and so the kind of cool about colin is that he is cousins with tony from season one uh so i think that there's definitely uh maybe a little bit of pressure on him you know tony came in third place can Colin continue uh, the family legacy of being very good at Survivor Millennium Park? <laughs> Next up, we've got Karina, and I'm going to tell you all right now, Karina is someone to watch for. I met Karina, again, doing the, the other game, The Genius Massachusetts. She went on to do extremely well in that game. Uh, part of the way that game works is that you get eliminated by doing like a 1v1 competition with people. I think she won four 1v1 competitions in a row. Uh, so she was directly responsible for eliminating four people out of that game. She is so good at strategy games. She is, I think, in a very fundamental way, a gamer. I think she really understands how games work and how to play with other people. I think the question is really just going to be, do people catch on to what a strategic force she really is? Does she present it in a way that like she is the the leader of the group and people are excited to follow her? Or does it or do people see like, oh, she's really good at this and we need to do something about that? Drew is one of the people that I'm most excited for to have on this cast. Uh, Drew and I went to college together. I know that he is also a big, big Survivor fan. Uh, I remember one time at a party, we actually went around telling everybody how we thought they would do a Survivor, which is just to say, Drew really does understand the game and the show. Uh, and usually when I'm talking about somebody who's a big fan of Survivor, finally playing a game like this in person, I'm kind of like, okay, like they are going to uh, get overexcited. They're going to overplay. I don't have that concern for with, with Drew for some reason. I, I perceive that he is going to be level-headed about this. I think that he's going to be focused on, you know, longevity, keeping himself in the game as long as possible, um, and really thinking through, uh, th through strategic decisions in a smart way. Uh, I think he's got, like, a fun personality where he's not going to be perceived as, like, overly scheming, uh, and I think he's going to have an easy time working with people. Oh, I think Gabby's going to be great. I think that uh, she was very straight up with me in her interview that she is quiet, shy, reserved person, uh, and that doing this would be really far out of her comfort zone. So love that she's putting herself out there. Love that she's pushing herself. I do, I think that maybe she's like a little reluctant about it, but like in kind of a fun way. I think that, I think she has a little bit of like, a, I can't believe what I've gotten myself into kind of vibe, which I think is going to be fun. I, I think that Gabby could potentially, uh, you know, being a quieter person, it could be easy if her tribe loses early for them to be like, well, we haven't really talked to Gabby much. So like, let's like, this is an easy vote, uh, which would be unfortunate. I think that'd be a loss for them. I could also see maybe Gabby gets to the end and says, look, I pulled these things off behind the scenes. You undressed him enemy just because I'm quiet. And maybe that's what, maybe that could be what seals the deal for her and gets her the win. Longtime subscribers of this channel may recognize Jason from two appearances in the original Survivor Berkshires series, uh, seasons one and three, uh, filmed in 2013 and 2015, uh, where they got voted out very early both times. Uh, third one out in season one, first one out season three, tenth place both times. Jason, I just, I don't think they can help themselves. I think they like to play a big, fun game. Uh, I know in season three, uh, they positioned themselves as the swing vote, and then the rest of the tribe was like, hold on, uh, why is Jason being so over the top? Did Dylan put them up to this? Oh, so I, I'm Jason's brother, by the way, so I don't know if they're planning to re uh, reveal that information, but people in the past have been like, oh, you're related to the host? Uh, clearly, you are, you're a mole. You've been put here to like cause chaos and craziness. Um, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen. They are flying out from Wisconsin to participate in this. Uh, I, I would love to see Jason do well, uh, but I think that they are more focused on having fun, uh, and I hope that they have fun. <laughs>
And you know what? I'm the same way when I play these games, so maybe it's in the blood. <laughs> Jeff is somebody who might seem like he's a little bit on the more soft-spoken side, but in fact, he is uh, very comfortable in a leadership role. He organizes these massive, massive trips of like, like, like 200 people going on a ski trip for a week kind of thing. Like he organizes that for people. So he's very comfortable uh, in groups of people. Uh, clearly, people gravitate towards him. I think that, you know, uh, the questions for Jeff are going to be like, one, uh, does he need to be in a leadership role or is he just comfortable in one? Because obviously, you know, in a game like this, like that can always like paint a target on you if you become the leader of a group. And two, I think that he's definitely uh, one of the most athletic contestants on this season. And it's obvious that he is. Uh, so do people paint a target on him? Now, these challenges don't necessarily require athleticism, but, you know, all you need in this game is a reason to vote somebody out. And if somebody says, hey, have you guys noticed like Jeff's kind of strong, uh, that could paint a target on him. So really, really curious to see how Jeff does. Also, a uh, big, big Survivor fan. So excited to see what strategy he implements in this game. All right, last but not least, we've got Sarah for the DM Tribe. Maybe person I'm most excited for over this season. It is almost entirely a, a question mark for me in the context of this. I know Sarah through community theater. I know her to be one of the funniest, kindest, most hardworking people uh, that I've had the pleasure of doing shows with. Uh, and I'm really curious to see her in the context of not a big group project that we're all in this together, but in a very individual game. What energy does she bring to that? Uh, you know, I don't think she's the biggest Survivor fan, so I'm curious to see, you know, like, what are her opinions on this game where you're deceiving people, where you're, like, meeting strangers and, like, betraying them within hours of meeting them? Uh, how, how does she fit in with the rest of the tribe? You know, like, if they, if somebody picks up and, like, oh, like, you know, like, for me, this is something I've been waiting for years to play for her. Like, this is just, like, a fun thing to try. Like, like, do they pile on that? I, I don't know. I don't, I'm actually a little hesitant to make, like, a solid prediction for Sarah because I really truly don't know but i'm very excited to see how it plays out <laughs> all right so that covers all of the uh 14 individuals participating in the game but i did want to sh uh, share a little bit of information uh, about some of the pre-existing relationships coming to this uh i'm excited to say that this season 10 of the 14 players no knowledge of each other, as far as I'm aware. So this is a cast of mostly strangers, which I'm very excited about, but there are a few interesting dynamics coming in uh, that I'm excited to see how they play out. So first up, uh, Drew from the DM tribe and Julia from the Carpe tribe not just went to college together. Uh, they are best friends. Uh, they are incredibly close. Uh, not only that, they have three friends who are going to be on the film crew for this season. So I think... I expect it's going to be really hard for them to keep it a secret that they are extremely, extremely close. Uh, and I guess the, the question when you have a pair of best friends in a game like this is always like, are they the kind of best friends where like, this is board game night and I can't wait to take you out? Or is it like, what a fun thing to do together. Let's see if we can make this work. So uh, I think it's going to be hard for them to keep it a secret though. And I do anticipate one of them will be voted out pre-merge. The only other pre-existing relationship is a very different dynamic. Uh, this is Karina from the DM Tribe and Eric from the Carpe Tribe. They both competed in the Genius Massachusetts, the game that I mentioned uh, going, when I was going over both of them. They were absolutely rivals in the game. Like I said, Eric went on to win the game. Karina, I believe, came in fourth place, so really made it almost all the way, uh, working against each other the entire time, and I do remember at the end when, like, the vote, when the eliminated players, like, kind of have a say in, like, how the ending goes, Karina was very vocally opposed to Eric winning the game, so, uh, you know, it, it's hard to say how much of that, if any, is going to carry over, but at the very least, they are aware of each other, and I think both understand that is a person to be reckoned with, so extremely curious to see you know how much of that they share with the other players if it even comes up at all and finally uh my winner pick for the season i'm actually also going to share my co-producer zach from season one uh he and i did sort of like a fantasy draft where we picked who we thought we were most likely to win overall i felt that it was more likely that somebody from the carpe tribe would win and he felt that it was more likely that somebody from the dm tribe would win speaking overall about the tribes however we ended up picking the opposite when it came to our own individual picks. My winner pick is Drew. Zach's winner pick is Angela. 
I think in both of these players we're talking about uh, two big Survivor fans, so coming with the knowledge of the game and a drive to do well at it. Uh, people who present themselves as very level-headed, uh, rational players. I don't think either of them is here to like... I, I don't think either of them is here to like do something crazy or like have like a whole episode about like what a big crazy move they made. I think that they're both here to win uh, and to have a good time doing it and to like be like a good person along the way. So I I think that, uh, like I said, I went with Drew, Zach went with Angela. Uh, I do expect overall, I, I think that it is more likely that somebody from Carpe is going to win. So maybe, maybe, maybe this one goes to Zach. I don't know. Uh, but very excited to see how, how this plays out. All right, that does it for the cast assessment for season two of Survivor Millennium Park. Really, really excited to, to share this one with everybody. Uh, season premiere on Sunday, January 29th. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram for all sorts of behind the scenes, deleted scenes kind of stuff. Check out the rest of our YouTube channel. You'll see a preview of the season. You'll see the full Meet the Cast video. I've told you about them, uh, learn about them from their own words. And uh, like and subscribe, etc., etc. All right, thanks, everybody.